After putting the unspeakable things her mother's boyfriend had done behind her, a fragile 13-year-old Oprah Winfrey escaped from the filthy dwelling where she had been living and ran desperately into her father's arms. When she eventually arrived at Vernon Winfrey's house, the young Oprah finally felt something resembling safety. Little did she know that the man she called dad, and who she would spend the next years of her life with, was anything but her biological father. Let me take you inside the barber shop and meet my dad. Dad? Oprah was just a few weeks old when her mother, Vernita Lee, left her with her grandmother and set off to look for a job and earn a living. And with her, Vernita took an unspeakable secret, the true identity of Oprah's father. Isolated from her parents, Oprah spent six years living in the care of her maternal grandmother on a farm located in the poorest area of Mississippi, in the deep south of the United States. Many of you have heard me share this story of growing up rural Mississippi, obviously a black girl, at the time, we were called colored people, Negroes, and my grandmother was a maid. That's all she ever knew. At just three years old, Oprah's grandmother forced her to do exhausting chores, and if she refused or made a mistake, she was beaten with a wooden stick. But none of the hardships she went through on the farm as a little girl compared to the ordeal she faced when her mother turned up out of the blue to take her to live with her and her boyfriend in a house in Wisconsin that they shared with other families. That is when the nightmare truly began. When I was separated from my grandmother and sent to live with my mother at six years old, I walked into that space feeling completely alone and abandoned with no explanation of why I was being sent away. However, Vernita Lee's volatile emotions and the chaos that reigned in her home forced her to go back on her decision and turn to Vernon Winfrey for help. Just a few months later, Oprah was moved again, this time from her mother's house in Wisconsin to Vernon Winfrey's home in Nashville, Tennessee. One phone call was enough for Mr. Winfrey to assume responsibility for the little Oprah and welcome her into his home, no questions asked. After vaguely calculating the dates and the men she had been with, Vernita concluded that Vernon was effectively Oprah's biological father. She didn't mention anything about the other two men she had also been seeing at the time. And Vernon didn't find out the truth until years later, when he checked his military record and saw with absolute certainty that he couldn't have fathered a child born in January 1954. But when he found out, Oprah already called him dad and he loved her with all his heart. And just like that, Vernon Winfrey began to give her everything that she had been missing out on for so long. He took her with him to the barber shop where he worked, so that he could always be by her side. And the young Oprah, brimming with innocence, was forever grateful for his kindness, and her love for Vernon grew stronger by the day. But their hopes of finally starting a prosperous and healthy life were crushed when Vernita Lee reappeared to take Oprah back to her home. A heavy blow that would stay with the little girl forever. At her mother's house, Oprah went through hell, suffering greatly at the hands of her uncles, as well as Vernita's boyfriend. A friend of the family, and then by an uncle, it was just an ongoing, continuous thing. So much so that I started to think, you know, this is the way life is. I never told anybody until I was... Um, in my late 20s. Toda suerte de abuso, de abuso de tipo de violencia física o sexual o psicológica, los niños sufren desde, desde algún tipo de figura adulta, claramente afectan la estabilidad psicológica del niño. Oprah put up with the abuse until her 13th birthday, and practically on the verge of self-destruction, she left her mother's house and returned to Vernon's home in Nashville. And I was released to go to live with my father. And that was my saving grace. After her return, Vernon began an arduous healing process to give Oprah back the love and confidence that the previous years had stolen from her. He enrolled her in Nashville High School and made sure that she received a high-quality education both at school and at home. And he didn't need a DNA test proving that she was his daughter to do so. From that moment on, Oprah's path to success was paved and she followed it with conviction. She achieved the highest grades in her class 
took various public speaking classes, won scholarships, and presented the news in her local radio station. Finally, there was light at the end of the tunnel. El caso de Oprah, que es una persona que aprendió a vivir y a luchar por las consecuencias que le sucedieron en su vida, es una persona resiliente. Oprah came very close to the edge, but her own resilience, together with the tireless dedication of Vernon Winfrey, finally tipped the scales in her favor. After everything, their efforts had paid off. In 1986, a nervous 32-year-old Oprah Winfrey presented an episode of The Oprah Show on air for the first time. And while it was being broadcast live across the United States, her father, the humble barber from Nashville, tuned in with pride, telling his barbershop clients all about his daughter. Mission accomplished. The rest is history. Dad, yes. meet the people. <laughs>